Hello everyone, welcome to Veranda IAS in this series of lectures of current affairs associated with art and culture. The topic of the day, the topic of the discussion is Lachit Borfukan. Lachit Borfukan, one of the important commander in chiefs of the Ahom kingdoms. Yes, commander in chief and not the ruler, but still he is celebrated and he is equivalent to a ruler because of his chivalry and his contribution in the strengthening of a home kingdom in India. The learning objectives of the day are to discuss about Lachit Borfukan, to examine why this topic is in news, the Lachit Borfukan in news and then we will discuss, analyze the Lachit Divas. See, we have discussed in our previous sessions when we were discussing about Chao Lung Sukhapa who was the founder of a home kingdom there we discussed the history of a home kingdom in detail. We discussed that a home kingdom's founder was Chaolung Sukhapa. Sukhapa was the word in the local language which was used for the rulers, for denoting any ruler. The meaning, the literal meaning of Sukhapa was the ruler of the heaven or in Hindi, you can say Swarg Dev. Swarg Dev or ruler of the heaven. The one who rules over the heaven. Swarg. So, he was founder. He was the one who came from Burma, Myanmar and he established near Charaya Dev. And then over the period of the time, a home kingdom was expanded, extended. Apart from that, important thing is, important name is Lachit Borfukan. In Lachit Borfukan, you have to remember, the name of the commander-in-chief was Lachit. What is Borfukan? Borfukan is a title given to commander-in-chiefs in the Ahom kingdom. There was a council of minister and various ministers who were accompanying the ruler one amongst them used to be Borfukan. The title Borfukan meant Commander-in-Chief. Or you can say Military General. So, Lachit was the name of this Commander-in-Chief. You can see various other Borfukans as well in a home kingdom's history. Lachit Borfukan's chivalry and his Valor is very much popular. There are incidences which say that one of the important battles being handled by Lachit was Battle of Sarai Ghat. You know about this, we have discussed in our previous sessions. So it is said during the Battle of Sarai Ghat, when the Mughal army was there to compete with the Ahom kingdom, at that time the Ahom ruler was Chakradhwaj Singh. Chakradhwaj Singh and the army of the Ahoms was led by Lachit Borfukan. On the other hand, the Mughal ruler Aurangzeb was there. Aurangzeb sent the Rajput king of Amer to defeat the Ahoms in the area of Assam. At that time, Lachit was not well. Lachit was going through some serious medical conditions. But apart from that, the doctors advised Lachit not to go to the battlefield, even not to get up from his bed. Even after that, Lachit was the one who went to the battlefield, who was the one who took charge of the army, who commanded the army. Considering that he is the leader of the army, if he will be sitting at his house, lying at his bed, who will be the one who will take care of the valor of the sentiments of the encouragement amongst the soldiers. So he came to the field and then he said to his army men that whenever you are going to meet the king, tell him that I was the one who was fighting at the battle at the field till my last breath. I am not going to go from here. Uh, if Mughals are coming and taking me with them, that's okay. I am not well. They can take me. But I am going to fight. Such are the chivalrous movements being cherished regarding Lachit Borfukan in the history of India. Not only this, there is an incidence as well 
where Lachit's maternal uncle was given a work to establish a wall for defense. Lachit's maternal uncle, in between Lachit was on some, uh, on some campaign, on some fight, he gave a work, a task to his maternal uncle to build a wall for the defense. His maternal uncle was reluctant, he did not build the wall. But when Lachit came after that, his uncle thought that, okay, I am the relative of the commander-in-chief. No one is going to hamper my prestige or going to point me out. But when Lachit came back, he found out that the work was not done. What he did? He took out his sword and he beheaded his throat. He cut his head. And after that, he sent a message to the people Whosoever are you, whatever works and duties are assigned to you, you have to fulfill in spite of the power and the prestige and the relations to the monarchy. You have to work honestly. It is also said that Lachit got a sword which was gold pleated by the king. When Lachit was returned from a war, he was given a sword which was gold pleated by the king to defeat the Mughals. And Lachit was very popular amongst the court man, amongst the kings as well. He was one such personality. We'll discuss about Lachit and Battle of Sarai Ghat one by one. He was born in 1622, 24th of November. 24th of November, 1622, Lachit was born. Borfukan was renowned for his leadership at the Battle of Sarai Ghat. 1671 was the year in which Mughal armies attempted but failed to take Assam. Mughal armies failed to take Assam because of the leadership of Lachit. Lachit is also, one is Battle of Sarai Ghat and before that it was Lachit's attempt that Lachit retook, recaptured the area of Guwahati from the Mughals. Mughals attempted, attacked Guwahati and Guwahati was with Mughals, but Lachit retook that from Mughals. We all know that how wide was Mughal Empire in India. We all know that how much prestigious and powerful were the rulers of Mughal India. So Lachit was fighting with them and Lachit was being victorious as well. Due to his brilliant naval plans, his naval capacities, his navy was brilliant and this was the weakness of the Mughals because we know that Mughal Empire was not focusing on any naval power. Mughal Empire had most of the areas which were not surrounded by water. So there was no need as well. And Lachit found out this weakness of the Mughals and also worked on his naval plans, worked on strengthening his navies. Due to his brilliant naval plans, he was instrumental in growing India's naval force, revitalizing inland water transport, not only for a home kingdom, but also for whole of the India, he made number of attempts to revitalize inland water transport and developing an infrastructure linked with it, strengthening the naval power in India. Then comes Lachit's gold medal is being presented by the Indian government. This is what is important. This is what is the topic in news. The Lachit Borfukan gold medal is presented to the National Defense Academy's top cadet. NDA's top cadet get Lachit Borfukan gold medal. A gold medal on the name of Commander-in-Chief who is cherished for his valor. The award was established in 1999 to motivate military troops to imitate, to copy Borfukan's bravery and sacrifices to copy and imitate the traits of leadership of Borfukan. He died in 1672 on 25th of April. 1672 was the year when he died. The topic in news, in March 2021, the Prime Minister of India termed Lachit Borfukan a 17th century Ahom commander, a symbol of India's Atmanirbhar military power. There was a description by Prime Minister of India regarding Lachit Borfukan. So whatever names Prime Minister is taking, that becomes important for your UPSC. Every year on the speeches of 
15th August, we see whatever important names or important states, players name, whenever the Prime Minister is taking, UPSC has a trend to ask questions from those. So that is why we have taken this topic in news. A home commander, Lachit Borfukan, was remembered by India's Prime Minister as Atmanirbhar military power symbol in India. Something about a home kingdom we all have discussed in detail. Just some details about the Battle of Sarai Ghat. The Battle of Sarai Ghat. You know at that time the ruler was the Chakradwaj Singha and the commander in chief was Lachit Borfukan from a home kingdom side. On the other hand, the Mughal ruler, contemporary Mughal ruler was Aurangzeb who appointed the king of Amer, Rajput king, to fight with Lachit Borfukan. The battle took place in the area of Sarai Ghat, which is near to the area of Guwahati. This is Guwahati. Near to that, there was Sarai Ghat. The battle took place there in 1671. In this battle, Mughals were defeated and Lachit and Ahom kingdom won and they were able to defeat the powerful Mughals. This battle of Sarai Ghat, the important thing which can be asked or which you can mention in your mains examination is why Guwahati was chosen by the people of Ahom kingdom, by the leadership of Ahom kingdom. So why Guwahati? Because see, first and foremost, Guwahati's any historical answer, uh, any answer of history if you are writing, we have discussed in your static syllabus that there are few points which are repetitive and which you can use smartly in all your answers. First is strategic location. Strategic location. Why Guwahati or why Sarai Ghat can be asked. So the strategic location of Guwahati tells there is hilly terrain and since a home kingdom was ruling there, they were aware of the hilly terrain, they were aware of the nuances, aware of the details of that terrain compared to the Mughals. So they thought that if Mughals are coming here, fighting with us here, we have good places to hide, we have good control over this area. The strategic location and then the hilly terrain, geographical location. Strategic, politically as well, Guwahati was important area and the capitals were nearby to this area only. Apart from that, the hilly terrain and then comes the stretch of river Brahmaputra. This we have discussed in our previous sessions as well. This is Brahmaputra Valley. So the stretch of Brahmaputra Valley or the river Brahmaputra at this place in Guwahati was just one kilometer wide and they knew that their naval forces can fight in such naval space better than the Mughals and that is why they chose the area of Guwahati. If you will zoom this map in Google Maps, you will go and you will find it out. The present day Brahmaputra Valley, when you will zoom, you will see that the Brahmaputra River is wider enough here and here it is limited only to small stretch and this was one of the important reasons why Guwahati was chosen by the people of the Ahom Kingdom, by the leadership of Ahom Kingdom. One factual information, the Lachit Divas. Lachit Divas is celebrated on 24th November each year. It is an annual celebration, annual commemoration. It is observed statewide in Assam, not national, statewide in Assam. On 24th November each year to remember Borfukan's gallantry, Borfukan's chivalry. Borfukan defeated the Mughal army in the Battle of Sarai Ghat, 1671 on the banks of River Brahmaputra. Since 1999, the top graduating cadet of National Defense Academy has been awarded the Lachit gold medal in recognition of his valor. 1671, you have to remember, then you have to remember 1999. So this was all for today's session. In today's session, we discussed about Lachit Borfukan. We discussed why Lachit Borfukan was in news. Then we discussed about Lachit Divas. I hope you all enjoyed this session. We'll bring you a new topic in next session. Till then, Stay tuned, keep studying, thank you so much.